Hello folks, this is David Hurley of EasyChessTips.com, your pub chess bluffer, drinking a hot cup of tea on a cold November day in 2019 as I report on the latest over-the-board game that I played on Wednesday the 20th um, against my regular opponent, Dr. M, in which he was white and opened with E4, perhaps expecting me to respond with my customary French defence, um, E6. However, I have been uh, reading uh, this book here, um, play a 1d6 against everything. And so I decided that instead of opening, instead of responding with d6, with e6, I would respond with d6. And that is what I did. And so we have the first few moves are uh, fairly regular stuff. Even this early bishop to d3 is perfectly acceptable. It was played by a uh, Chinese women's chess champion back in 2014, according to my uh, repertoire book. And so, perfectly acceptable. Uh, I respond with uh, e5, as Lai Chess is recommending. And then we have the building of the pawn chain. And... I bring out my bishop to e7, uh, perhaps a little early. Uh, that could be delayed for a move or two, but no problems so far. Now, uh, knight to f3, perfectly natural developing move. And this is where I make the first mistake of the game. Um, and luckily for me, it's an unpunished mistake. But... Looking at the situation here, Lychess is recommending an advance of the D pawn, but uh, from the point of view of the repertoire, um, the move knight to D7 is recommended. And why is that the recommended move? Um, because if you check out the arrangement in the middle of the board, uh, the knight and the pawn white's uh, d4 pawn and knight on f3 are both attacking black's e5 pawn and all that black has in defense is um, the d6 pawn so it's two to one now the idea of advancing up here is to offer a counter attack should uh, should black take uh, so d takes e5 that would then be d takes e4 with the white pawn attacking the knight and the black pawn attacking the bishop. However, I did not do that and I did not also do the recommended move by the repertoire book of knight, knight b to d7, so as to prop up the uh, defense of my e5 pawn. Instead of doing that, I blundered along uh, I was actually more concerned about the uh, option or the possibility of this knight heading down here to, uh, supported by the bishop, to the g5 square, where you have, of course, this uh, veil, this kind of uh, threat here. It's not a very serious threat at this stage of the game, but it's always uncomfortable to have your opponent's knight camping on your g5 square. So what I did instead of the necessary move in the middle, I uh, moved um, my pawn to h6. Now this gives uh, white the perfect opportunity to nobble that central pawn and to create a lot of trouble for black in the center. But as I said, it didn't happen because my opponent was also busy uh, pursuing his own development instead of analyzing the situation on the board. Uh, and in response to my h6 move, my opponent moved his pawn to h3, making a nice pretty pattern on the wing of the board, like so. Now, you would have thought that by now I would have spotted the uh, crucial central weakness of my position as it has developed here. But I blundered blindly on. Um, now, although I've read parts of this uh, D6 repertoire book, I'm not completely familiar with move orders and all that sort of thing. 
And I was more concerned about preventing the advance of the D pawn. Uh, and so this is what I did, a C6 move. It's a move which is out of order. It's a bit too previous because, as you can see, Lightyear is recommending that black, that uh, white simply nobble black's pawn here. Let's see if we can do that. And this will leave black at a disadvantage. You can see the advantage bar has gone down somewhat with black with a nice dominant uh, knight in the center. Black pretty much has control of the center here. Uh, sorry, white pretty much has control of the center here as well as a material advantage. So it's not looking good for black. However, instead of doing that, uh, my opponent continued his development by castling. And by now, I had seen the error of my ways. And uh, as Lightyess is screaming for me to do, I developed my knight to prop up my central defenses. And from here on, I don't think I had any big problems in this game. Uh, we will see uh, we're coming up, I think, uh, move 13. Where are we now? Move 8. A few moves down, uh, we get an error on the part of white. So let's move on to it. Yes, I want to I want to open up the position in front of uh, White's King. One of the features of this D6 repertoire, um, as as um, presented in, in the particular book I'm reading at the moment, I, I'm actually reading two books on the D6 repertoire, which have quite different approaches. Um, the D6 repertoire book I'm reading at the moment does not emphasize um, uh, early castling by black. And in, in some variations, there's no castling at all. Anyway, here's what happened. Um, <clears throat> yes, there's a counter. So although Lightyess, as you can see, is re recommending that that G pawn be quickly chopped off, um, my opponent is looking for a counterplay in the center. Uh, it's a little too late now. And as you can see, uh, Lightyess is not so impressed. Lightyess has uh, uh, brought us up to near parity with that move because I have a nice answer I can take with the knight. Um, as Lightyess is recommending, I delay, delay, or I, I decide not to grab the knight simply because the pawn over here can also grab a knight. And that uh, didn't seem, I, I, this knight is actually quite important for my plans. So instead, we go through with this variation. And this now is the first of the weak moves, I think. So Lightyess is recommending the advance of the knight, um, which will actually strengthen the defenses of, of um, or maintain, sorry, the defense of this central pawn here with the bishop. The knight should come forward. But my opponent moved the bishop forward. He's got his eye on this weak pawn down here. However, um, I simply um, keep continue with my plan to open up the defences in front of the king. Let's just have a quick look at what happens. What can happen if the knight moves in instead? Um, we still take the pawn. And we get into a nice little attack on the queen down here. If the queen moves up. Uh, what happens next? There's still white manages to maintain his advantage with more dynamic play. That, however, did not happen <clears throat> because we have this uh, weak move of the bishop. I take the pawn. And instead of the recommended light chess move, which you can see is to advance the pawn, um, my opponent pretty quickly just took back the pawn. And you can see what it opens. The, it opens up the way for an attack on the king. I indeed took the pawn attacking the rook. <clears throat> and this is where things are, things look a bit strange in this game because you would have thought, I mean, Lightyear is not recommending that uh, the rook move at all. Uh, what happens if, if the rook moves away? We simply get in an early check. We get in a check down here. Black comes up here. And the queen moves into the game as well. <clears throat> None of that happened because ignoring the threat of the bishop on the rook, 
you would have, I, one would have expected the rook to be moved away. Um, my opponent brought the queen into uh, the contest, perhaps thinking more about defending the position in front of the king. Um, I then uh, responded with the check by the rook. And this, this is another mistake. You can see uh, Lycius doesn't like it at all. Um, it puts the king in a rather bad position. And indeed, I bring my bishop out to attack the queen. It's quite interesting that um, you may wonder why I didn't actually pick up the rook. It's because I want to move the queen into that corner where she goes. Um, here, I bring my queen up to d7 to um, strengthen this, uh, this uh, diagonal here in the attack on the king. The rook moves over to um, to try and defend that file. I then do a queenside uh, castle, bring an extra rook into the game, even though it's not particularly recommended. It's not particularly recommended by light, yes, but uh, my advantage doesn't drop too much in doing that. We then get a rook lift, and I move back my... Um, Bishop to open up lines of attack. Now, uh, whereas Lycius is recommending exchanges for white, white moves his bishop back, and I continue this opening up process like so, bring in my extra rook, and indeed advance the pawn. And here... Ah, yeah, this is another mistake. Of course, this knight is doing duty defending the central pawn here. And as soon as the knight moves away, which actually restricts the queen and the rook's um, field of activity as well, while admittedly defending this pawn here, it, it simply enables my knight to nobble the pawn and to jump into an excellent square from which we will get lift off towards victory. Um, the knight is attacked by the bishop. The knight moves back. There is an attempt for counterplay on the uh, opposite wing, but I have time to ignore it. Um, now, having uh, moved my knight back, I can attack that bishop with my central pawn. The bishop moves back. Indeed, move up the knight. The move up knight. Move up the h pawn. Um, and again, the h pawn is instantly taken, and this is where I can now move my knight in and <laughs> an attempt to grab the pawn and perhaps uh, with an eye on this weakly defended king, <laughs> this weakly defended king, the king, of course, being somewhat vital, uh, and an advance to, to promote um, and perhaps to distract me from my attack on the king. We have this um, uh, b takes a5, but I completely ignore it because I have my eyes on a bigger prize. Check, a nice little queen check. And the king makes a fatal error here. You can see Lychess recommends the king uh, retreat to h1, but mm, the king does me a massive favor by hopping behind and automatically pinning the bishop. My rook is here looking at the bishop, uh, but better, even better than that for me is that I've now got a nice route with my knight to uh, fork the king and the queen. Knight takes pawn, knight comes over here and checks the king and grabs the queen. The bishop is pinned to the king and so cannot move. So uh, that, that was a very poor king placement with all those things in mind. And uh, if you check how the moves go, my knight nobbles the, um, nobbles the pawn, the h pawn. And the situation is so dangerous that so my knight is protected by my bishop here. Let's put in a, let's put in a, here we go, a yellow, yellow a support arrow here. My knight is supported by my bishop, and you've got my queen coming in over here too. 
and of course this bishop here also coming in over here or also able to use this diagonal here uh, for possible uh, later checks so things are going pear-shaped for um, white and so dire is the situation that uh, Lichess is recommending a queen sacrifice um, however that didn't happen Instead, we have an attempt to prop up the defense of the bishop and in pops the knight and forks the king and the queen and down goes the queen. The uh, queen. However, as good as that is, you can see that Lichess has a better idea, a clearer path to victory. Now, I should say in our defense that time was running down on the clocks. We only had a few minutes left at this stage of the game. Um, but and I, I sat and I, I thought about it for a while, but I didn't think long enough or deeply enough to find any solution. So uh, I simply decided to cash in and take the queen. However, Lichess offers this rather nice alternative. The king is checked and the king has to move here, at which point everything can move in. We've got a bishop coming in here. And we've got the, the, uh, the rook can come in here and the king is forced back and still we aren't taking the queen hop over here and take the uh, take the rook the queen is still stuck but as i said time was running out on the board i doubt that i would have got there anyway so i went for the easy exchange pick up the queen King takes the queen, uh, king takes the knight, and this is a sitter, this is a howler on my part. I completely missed this because I was looking at, I was looking at instead of uh, nobbling the pawn so that, to remove that threat of, of promotion, that, though by now it's a very remote threat, even with these two bishops on those diagonals. Um, but also by moving the queen up there, I was aiming at this diagonal here. However, it would have been much better had I, instead of moving swiftly, spotted this nice gaping, um, this nice, nice diagonal here where I can pick up a rook. It didn't happen, but still, I'm not punished too much by it. In fact, the advantage doesn't shift at all. I made several of these uh, these blunders in the in the end game, none of which um, they merely slowed down slowed down victory it actually became quite quite dangerous for me simply on the time point of view uh, i finished the game with just six seconds left on the clock i managed to achieve victory but it was a very close run thing because of my my inefficiency in the end game so this is something i do need to study much in much more detail um, the rook rescues himself and hops over we get in a check which moves the king nicely across to uh, the diagonal here which means the rook will be pinned now the obvious way to pin it again this is another blunder on my part would be for the queen to take the pawn pin the rook and protect this pawn here from the bishop but the first thing i see is that my bishop can come into the action so that's what i use and um, my opponent picks up the pawn. Um, now, do I see this? I can, of course, grab this pawn because the rook is pinned and cannot take back the queen. That's perhaps asking a bit too much. I just grab grab the, uh, the, the quick material prize and then I grab the pawn, forcing the king to come and protect the bishop. I bring in the rook. It's protected by the bishop, and I'm pleased to say this is one easy maneuver I did manage to spot. Um, he gets in a check, moves up the knight, and then I take the bishop, and we get this exchange. Now, again, I, I, <laughs> I'm pleading time here, but it's a pretty feeble excuse. Obviously, the queen should come across here because then we can pick up the knight. I was playing a very inefficient end game, even though this is definitely the end game. Uh, I played it's almost as inefficiently as I could possibly play. 
check. The king begins to move over. I finally pick up the knight. And the king hops over to attack the bishop. I let the king have the bishop and come in here for... Now, checkmate is unavoidable, but I managed to uh, prolong the agony. So uh, he defends his king with the bishop and Lychess has the, the obvious move. This is checkmate now in two. It's unavoidable. Let's play through the moves. So the queen comes up. There's only one possible move that the, that um, white can make, and that is to move the king down. And once that happens, once that happens, it is checkmate. And I would have had um, probably 90 seconds left on the clock, but it didn't happen. I didn't see it in short. Uh, instead, I moved my queen up to, so I moved my queen up to h7 to check the king. The king moved to g5 and the bishop fell. Now the king, ca the king came down here. This is as far as I've gone with the, with my notes because I was running low on time. I only had about 30 seconds left, something like that. So I'd had no time to write the rest of the notes. And um, with 30 seconds left, the king led me a merry dance around and around my pawn until I eventually managed to achieve checkmate with just six seconds to go. So the lesson for me, the two lessons for me really in this uh, game are one, to uh, study my opening repertoire in more detail, to look out for those uh, early opening move mistakes. And the second one is to uh, look, look, study the end game in more detail. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that run through of our game uh, with the good old D6 repertoire achieving in a slow fashion, a slower than desirable fashion, a victory against White's E4 opening. That's all for me, David Hurley of EasyChessTips.com. Until the next time.